Hello, Lee Ping. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to the College of Complexes tonight. My name is Tim, and I'd like to welcome you to our infamous meeting. There are two rules to the College of Complexes. The first is one fool at a time, and the second is no personal attacks. The college consists of the following format. First, we'll have a brief announcements period, and our speaker, Jenny, will speak tonight. And then after that will be a question and answer period. And at the end of our question and answer period, we'll have our infamous rebuttal period, which can go up. We're scheduled from six to nine, but if we need to, uh, uh, if we need to extend it a little bit, I'll keep the Zoom call open because in the last week we were on for a number of hours. And uh, Charlie, if you're ready for the announcements, I'll uh, pull up the schedule and uh, get ready to go here. So take okay, it away, Charlie. Uh, uh, Welcome everyone to meeting number 3,623 of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. Uh, let's, first of all, we have relatively new Google email group, which uh, instructions are found on our website to join in order to get an announcement once or twice a week on upcoming programs and the schedule. There also is a meetup group, which functions pretty much in the same fashion. Not a lot of traffic on that. Only one or two emails per week uh, on the upcoming programs, which you might want to subscribe to. Okay, the other thing is uh, we have three open dates in August, the 14th, 21st, and 28th. So if you would like to speak or know of an individual or organization we should invite, please let me know. Three dates in August. Uh, I'm working on one right now uh, that I might take one of those dates. I'm gonna speak on the history of the life of the ordinary person. Uh, anyhow, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for next week's program. Uh, seasoned College of Complexer, Karina Shushine, will be talking about how to be a cheapskate and how to get things for free. Uh, that's on July 10th. So that she's got a cheat sheet. Uh, so if you want to beat, learn how to beat capitalism, free market capitalism exploitation might be a good program. On July 17th, a newcomer uh, will be speaking on um, uh, the uh, Bonnie Jean's going to be talking about the U.S. political identity. Do we have one or what should it be? That should be an interesting one. Okay, on July 24th, uh, it's gonna be Theology, The uh, Secrets of Jesus and His Earnest Circle. So we're gonna find out all about the historical Jesus on the 24th. On the 31st, this is a topic in the news. I just got some emails about it, including Rights Act in Congress. Anyhow, we're going to get an update on the situation regarding voting, voting suppression, Supreme Court case this week. So that should very, would be an, a very important topic. Um, let's see, and we've got one more scheduled in September. We're going to have the, the author return, uh, gentlemen. Oh, wait a minute, August 7th, I forgot. Uh, the Young World Federalist will be speaking, and they're, they want to have one universal republic for the world. Uh, for many years, I was a member of the World Federalist Association, and we've had the, we had the adult, but these are young people uh, based somewhat in Europe. 
Um, but there's you can look at the website and get more information. And in September, um, the uh, we're going to have a talk on how Americans reacted and responded or dealt with the pandemic. I uh, did a cycle tour of the United States uh, and talked, interviewed all kinds of people. So that should be an interesting program. Okay, I guess that's about it, Tim. Uh, you can take it away. All right, um, Jenny, just take it over. And I, like I said, I'll share screen on any of those documents you want right away. Okay, great. All right, so um, I have three things to share, actually more than three, but three um, subjects to share about. Um, one of them is my family uh, papers. I was looking through them and I found this poem that my great grandfather had written in 1941. Is this the new flag poem or the old glory poem? Yeah, this is the old glory poem. All right, I'll share screen on it in a second. Here, then. Oh, great, great. Bear with me while it pulls up. So yeah. it's gonna take a minute here to get my computer running. So okay, no problems. Um, it's coming up. I uh, just give me a second. And I'll share screen with. Hello, Ernie. Hello, Bob. Hello, Ellen. All right, and we'll uh, pull it up here, and I'll uh, get the share screen going in just a second. Oh, okay. And we'll uh, and we're all set. Can you see it there? Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. Can everybody see it or do I need to magnify yeah. it a little bit more? Magnify it a little if you can. All right. Well, I got it. I can see it. I don't know how complicated. I can see it, but it's just I, I a little small. I can see small. it. Yeah. Yeah, but I got it. I got it. You're getting old, Ernie. Huh? You're getting old. That's true. Can, <laughs> but so are most of us. I my own I screen. If you don't worry, it's not that big a deal if you can't, if it's not easy. Yeah. Come on. Okay, let me make a comment while you're doing that, okay? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I found this old poem and I read it and I was like, wow, that's pretty good. And then I, I thought about um, the flag and stuff and I thought, I, I started to write my own poem using his topic his music and a lot of his friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I wrote that poem about the American flag. And then I thought, wow, what about a world flag? What about writing a poem about a world flag? And the idea for a world flag of mine is to have it be a photograph of the earth that would be changed every so often, you know, so like Asia doesn't get left out, right? You know. Oh wow, that's really that's very. There we go. That's good. Very large. I thought I just couldn't remember where the zoom function was at. You're getting old. <clears throat> go ahead, Jenny. Anyway, go. yeah. So we have three poems to talk about. One written by my great grandfather Edward Millington Waring, who was a Brooklynite, and then two written by me, and then we also have an exciting um, thing that I found on the internet. The National Endowment for the Humanities has put out three questions for teachers to use with their kids. And I thought they'd be good for us to, to look at as well. They're for the USA's 250th year anniversary, which is coming up. Um, so I wanted to read those questions and then we can think about them. And then we can get back to the poems. And then um, I also have a list of needs that I came up with, like human needs. So if we think about um, what should be the values of this country and the world in the future, you know, you might, we might have to start with thinking about what are people's needs, you know, and what are Americans needs um, specifically. So uh, what do you want to start with? Maybe this poem, because we have it right here. Yeah, 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 go right ahead. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read it. Born of love for God and country, flag that sets our hearts aglow. Patriots bore thee on to victory, blood-stained footprints in the snow. Our great nation, all one people, brothers, sisters, neighbors, 
friends, fruitful fields, rocks, woods, and steeple, all in one our nation blends. Underneath our banner glorious, homes and firesides fill the land. Freedom's wings and ships victorious, vision peace to every strand. A strand is like a cluster of houses, like a neighborhood. Uh, schools and churches safely cluster, neath thy peaceful folds unfurled, shedding freedoms, freedoms, radiant luster to mankind and all the world. Tyrant foes may plot insanely, binding chains of shackled slaves. While they rant and threaten vainly, freedom's flag still proudly waves. Cowards may quail and poltroons perish. Poltroons means cowards. All their false religions fail. Freedom and the flag we cherish, ever glorious. Hail, all hail. Inspiration of our nation, banner of the brave and free. Jubilation, jubilation, glorious thou shalt ever be. Okay, do you need this up or can I stop it and we'll put you back on? Yeah, this? go ahead, that's fine. Okay, and then I'll get the next one ready when you're ready. Okay. So, um... So if you look at that poem, uh, I'll, I'll go, get back to it. He mentions um, our great nation, all one people. And I took that phrase, all one people, which I, I used to work at a um, health food store and we sold buttons that had a picture of the earth and it said all one people. So I had good feelings about that phrase that he used. And um, I put it in my uh, American flag poem and my world flag poem. As, as you will see. But anyway, um, he's talking about um, um, all in one, our nation blends. So we have a diverse situation of people and even physical characteristics, fruitful fields, rocks, woods, and steeple. Um, homes and firesides fill the land. Um, and then he, he talks about freedom like 10 million times. <laughs> And then he also talks about peace. And if you think about when he wrote it in 1941, um, what was going on in the world at that time? Beginning of World War II. Yep. Yeah. Well, Nazi taking over Europe. My father was in a submarine. Yeah. It was, he joined up when he was 15 in 1940. Okay. Yeah. Um, round here was getting bombs. Sorry? <laughs> we were getting say? bombs dropped on round here. Bombs were dropping? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it was a, a, um, a good time to think of the flag of your country if you're going to be involved in a war, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, so he's, he's talking about freedom, um, the inspiration of our nation, banner of the brave and free, and how glorious uh, he felt about that the flag was, glorious the flag shall ever be. Um, and then he, he starts the poem by saying, born of love for God and country, flag that sets our hearts aglow. So I didn't um, continue the God thing because personally that's not as, um, it's important for me, but not necessarily with a capital G, you know, um, and not necessarily, um, I mean, I have my own thing, but um, to use the paternalistic, you know, common concept of God, which is actually um, shared by a lot of people in this country, right? But I still decided not to go ahead with that. So anyway, so he had that in his version. And um, then talking about patriots, patriots bore thee on to victory, blood stained footprints in the snow. Okay, so let's look at my next poem, which is the new much. flag poem. Okay. Um, and um, actually, you know what, um, Tim? Yes. Okay. Um, I've got right. it up, I'll just have to. Uh, oh, you got it? Okay, 
Cool. I'll get the share screen up in a second here if you uh, just give me a minute, please. It's just taking me a damn. No problem. Uh, I should take the opportunity to get a glass. No. Well, I, I'll share a screen real quick. Okay, here. Oh, come on, Tim. You know how to do this. Okay, here we go. Now I got to remember to magnify it now. Yeah, it's, oops. It's going to take me a minute to get this. Actually, this is pretty good. No, I want to get it up and mock magnify. Layout, that's right. Okay. And then where's the head magnified function before? And I can't remember where it's at. The size? Yeah, I, I, I just, I read uh, home. There's a. Layout. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, underneath that. Yeah, like where it says 14, right? Well, that's right. the font size. Oh, uh huh. No, no, I'm trying to just get the. Uh, it was here in the second room. Oh, the view. If you hit the fuck, oh, here we go. Two hundred. Okay, I'll know how to do this next time. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so this poem, I didn't know what to call it. Kind of, I kind of whimped out and just called it a new flag poem because it's about the American flag, just like the other one was. Okay, so you'll see some, like I say, you'll see some repetition. Liberty's your inspiration, flag that sets our hearts aglow. Patriots need you more than ever, election time of friend or foe. One great nation, all one people, white and black Hispanic friends, Asian Amerindian voters, all in one our nation blends. Underneath our banner glorious, problems dwell like big old trees. Freedom's needed and belief in one solution. It is peace. Mosques and churches safely cluster when threat comes from out or in. Now's the time to act together as our better history's been. Tyrants, greedy, plot insanely, shackling workers of our state. Handgun violence rages wildly where is freedom's flag to date? Cowards may spend and steal the fabric of our stars and stripes so low, yet we together make another, women, men, children in tow. Inspiration of our nation, those who try and try again. Jubilation, jubilation, glorious in the happy din. Okay, I'm gonna stop the share now where you talked about the poem. Okay. Charles, did you like that one? Yeah, that was good. That's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not like a patriotic guy, though. Huh? I'm, I'm not a real patriot guy. <laughs> you're not a you're not a real patriot? No, I'm kind of a commie. Yeah, we Yeah, well this the first well, one. No, no, it, you know. Go ahead, Kevin. Um, there is a redefinition of patriotism um, from the left. Uh, it's, it's, it's totally devoid from nationalism. There, there are things you can be proud of as a patriot. You can be proud of the freedoms that you, your country enjoys without saying that it's perfect and it doesn't, it doesn't it can't be improved. You can be proud of whatever systems of care and uh, you, that you give to your fellow people. You can be proud of the refugees you take, you know, because as a, you can be proud of a lot of things. You can even be proud of your sporting achievements, it's allowed. What was that, what was that? You, you can even be proud of your sporting achievements, even though you, you weren't particularly partaking in them, you know? It's allowed. Um, it's a difference between, there is a, a a re reclaiming the flag. Yeah. Um, we don't go an awful lot on flag waving in Britain, unless the football's on. Um, but there are times when we've when there's been uh, black and Asian athletes that have draped themselves in the flag, and it's kind of reclaimed it for us because there are enough that we do have our share of right wing idiots to wave it as well. You know. 
Um, so when when a black or an Asian athlete does drape themselves in the flag and say, this is my country, it, it makes us feel better because it means we are an inclusive nation. And I think I think that's that's the point about the Black Lives Matter protest that you guys, a lot of you guys failed to notice is the fact that what is about my country that says that that flag isn't theirs? Yeah. Um, what is it you know, about, what, what did you say? What, is, what, what a lot of people in America, perhaps not this, this group, but that uh, complained about the Black Lives Matter protests, uh -huh. Neil's and like that. Well, what is about my nation that divorces those people from the flag? And what can I do about that? You Rather mean we should ask ourselves really, that question? I got pardon? We should be asking ourselves that question. Well, yeah, not, not that the people who complain about the Black Lives Matter protests. Oh, certainly I should, yeah. And, and, and I think, well, Americans as a whole, what why it's it's kind of like complaining because your 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 partner's angry with you and not realize not actually addressing the reason why they're, they're angry you know mm -hmm. that's a good point that's a good point <laughs> like, uh... i have I have let's, a. Let's get let's get back to my speakers. Hold on, hold on. I want to hear what mm -hmm. Ellen has to say. All right, I'm sorry. Okay, Ellen, go ahead. Thanks. Right. Um, it made me think. Uh, you know, my father was fighting in the Japanese War um, in '41, and but then in the last few years, uh, we had a conversation, and you know. Um, I said, what do you, you know, what do you think about football game? And he says, I don't watch it anymore, you know, um, I'm because of the Black Lives Matter. And I said, oh, that's crazy because I'm I'm actually kneeling with Black Lives Matter. That's what I do. And and he said, you know, and it was kind of awkward for a minute. And but then he said, well, it sounds like you're doing pretty good, <laughs> you know, so uh, it makes me think, you know, what what that guy just said that. Um, you know, it, they could, I think, you know, like the world would like to divide us into us versus them. And, uh, you know, there's a way that, you know, like poetry, but, you know, like you said, just talking to your partner, what are you mad about? But I also wanted to say, interestingly, that tomorrow I'm going to, um, I've been asked to speak, this just the second time, um, about what is the, um, what is the 4th of July for the black man? You know, there's a group of, uh, of you know, Black Lives Matter types um, and talk about police brutality. And it, it's interesting because I've kind of spent the week thinking about Frederick Douglass and all these things, but uh, it's, you know, so this is an interesting contrast to, um, you know, talk, you know, hear you talk and uh, we have to all, talk through this stuff but it you know like i'll try to send out emails trying to get everybody to come to yeah. this and it, it can uh, be stressful all right, all right. so Ellen, anyhow Ellen. Um, we, we, we got okay that's my here. insight all right let's let's uh let our speaker go here jenny please continue okay. all right so um but that doesn't remind me of something i recently ran across Ellen, in this book um america in the world where uh visionaries speak and they had this one guy, Sam Nunn, N-U-N-N, -N -N, who is in, char in charge of the Nuclear Threat Initiative, which is a group that tries to educate people about how, you know, our government has their finger on the button and we could go at any time, you know, and how to prevent um, World War III. But anyway, he was saying, um, we can't use ta not talking to somebody as a punishment, that doesn't work. You know, like our country can't go around and say, oh, you know, well, we don't like you. So we're just not gonna talk to you, you know? Like for example, with North Korea, mm -hmm. you know? Anyway, so I wanted mm -hmm. to, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jenny, okay, so now can we have the final poem, please? Okay, the, uh, be which one, Jenny? Poem to New Glory. Okay, hang on, let me get. Go ahead, speak about it while I upload it real quick. Okay. Poem to New Glory, yeah. you said, right? Yeah, poem to New Glory. Yeah, this is um, a poem to the world flag. 
and that the world flag would have a photo of Earth in space on it, and yet the view would be changed, uh, switched yearly because of, um, you know, for equality reasons. So everybody can see their, their own country on the flag at some point, right? Okay, was it it's the new flag poem, right? No, no, it's the poem to New Glory. I'm gonna pull it up. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, bear with, bear with me. It's just gonna take a minute. So okay. you said it's uh, old glory or new glory? New glory. Okay, I'll get that up next. Okay, thanks. Sorry about that. Right, Dad. Sure, screen. I can't believe I'm having so much trouble here with this stuff. Okay, new glory. It's. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then... Is this the? Sam Nunn from Georgia, the young, that, that's a senator, that's a different, or a different Sam Nunn, I'm just wondering. I have no idea if he's- Because he was senator. kind of a war hawk, it's interesting, I have to look at that. Um, well, Sam Nunn is definitely not a, a war hawk. A war hawk, okay, a different one. Yeah, if you want, I can go look in my book when we're done and I'll tell you a little more about him. But he, like I say, he ran the, um, the nuclear threat initiative, he still runs it. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. You see every, can everybody see it now? Sorry? Yeah. Everybody can see it now, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Poem to New Glory. Born of love for land and ocean, flag that sets our hearts aglow. Spacemen saw Earth in their motion and left moon footprints as hello. Our great planet. All one people, brothers, sisters, neighbors, friends, fruitful fields, rocks, domes, and steeple. All in one, our planet blends. Underneath our banner glorious songs and stories by the band, all free to play and be victorious, shaking peace with every hand. Temples, churches safely cluster, Neath thy tranquil folds unfurled, sharing Concord's radiant luster with humankind in all the world. Alien foes plotted insanely, invading, stealing lands from braves. But new and old world converse plainly, humanity's great flag now waves. Cowards may quail, and fools may falter, hypocrites, religions fail. Liberty, the globe won't tumble, ever glorious. Hail, all hail. Sharing human inspiration, banner of the true and free. Jubilation, jubilation, glorious thou shalt ever be. I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. Do you need it up, or do you want me to go ahead and uh, take it? Down? I leave it up, actually, yeah. too, because we might want to look at it again. Okay, I'll go to the top. Okay, great. So, um, <laughs> any comments? Were, was this published? Or, yeah, that um, this stuff has been these published. Poems? No, these are these have not been published, unfortunately. Um, any, any melody? Any melody? <laughs> uh for this poem any like song it could be like song put it into a song yeah you oh, you mean like to put to the you you know like put to the sound of the music born of love na 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 play yeah. the cell, na 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 it's possible <laughs> to you know yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. If I may say so, the, um, Go ahead, Charlie. the uh, Earthville people that were here, they have taken this valley, please, let, let me talk. Uh, the Earthville people that were here sing a song to the America, but it's ecological. It's like America landed a pollution or something like that. Oh, wow, that's like, interesting. Or something like that. It's, you know, America, <laughs> let's clean it up. Something yeah. like that. I don't know. 
Yeah. But they sing it at every meeting um, uh, that they have. It's the Earth Bill. Earth uh, Bill? If you want to Earth Bill. Okay. I'll look that up. Thank you. Okay. So we've got two suggestions. One is to make it a song. All right. Um, oh, yeah. It's very important. Important is it's, it's it's much more expressive, you know, and it's much more nicer if it's gonna be you know in sound of the music. Yeah, I I concur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It it does kind of sound like a a church, you know, anthem, you know, the kind of music you had, you know, um, you sing in church. I, it kind of really? not a bad idea. Okay. Cool. Right. I, I think so. Like a like a hymnal, you know. Uh, mm. Right. It's I was thinking we need um mm -hmm. people were saying that you know we need kind of a um some anthems or uh these days, I think you know, you've got the the black um that anthem, right? Uh, lift your voice and sing, and it, it is so powerful. Um Right, went to have a really good one. Whereas, I think people there's a lot of criticism sometimes about the, um, you know, Star Spangled Banner or you know the more you kind of learn about these things and you go oh, listen to the last verse and it's actually really, That's you know, the guy verse. was a racist or something. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no free man or slave. It would, it would, I think, is one of the lines. Oh, okay. so I don't worry about that. The second verse of the, our national anthem is all about by kicking seven bells out of the Scots. You know what? Uh, I guess I guess I know the radio melody. You know, sound like tune, uh, but I have to perhaps organize because I'm a musician, also, so I can organize and uh, make like perhaps. Uh, but Tim or somebody, if somebody can send me to my mail or to my text oh. this poetry. Um, I can I make you. Attachments. You can send me an email, and I'll forward it. Forward them all to you from Jenny. And then I perhaps I can compose melody. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. What is your name, uh, Madam? Well, I'm not Madam. Don't call me Madam. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Lana. Lana. Via email, Lana. 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 Uh huh. Okay. Great. And I, you know, I'm really a musician also. Mm -hmm. So I, I play piano and I, I sometimes I compose. So I'm gonna stop the sharing us so we can see each other again, okay? And then I'll pull it up if we need to. Okay. Okay, so um so it's possible, I'm sorry, if possible you can send to Tim and Tim can send I've to I've got me. all the attachments in an email, Lana. I'll tell you what. Huh? I've got all our attachments in the form of an email. I'll log into my account and get them to you right now. Oh, okay, because I would like, it's very nice. It's very no, lovely. I'm gonna send them to you now. I and I would like, you know, like in my mail. I'll, I'll send them to you now. Laura. Thank you. So Tim, you're gonna send her the poem? Yeah, you're attached. Yeah. If anybody else wants to just go ahead, but I have her email and my thing so just go ahead and keep talking what about the what's the next one you want to pull up or you want to speak for a few um minutes? okay well i'm not quite done with this one yet okay. i um i really liked the way the the new flag poem which is the you know american flag one that i wrote i liked the all one people and um i also liked um inspiration of our nation those who try and try again because I feel like this country has been through so much, you know, and um, that is a characteristic of our people. Hmm. Should just keep trying. Okay, what's your name, may I ask, madam? Yeah. <laughs> what's it's your name? Jenny. Okay. And who yeah. wrote and who wrote this poetry? Me. Oh. <gasps> yeah. No, my my relative, my great grandfather wrote the first one. Did you hear the first one? Uh, no, I don't know. The first one is um, Poem to Old Glory, hmm. which he wrote in 1941. Whoa. And I wrote the other two. Lana, that was what? Happy Camper what? Happy Camper 259. Okay, okay. That's, that's all I need to know. 
Happy Camper 259 at yahoo.com. I'll get it to you now. Thanks. Sorry about yeah. that, Jenny. Jenny, can you give me your yeah, that's, email? That's helpful. Thank you. Jenny, can you give your email address? Sure, well, yeah. We'll put Perhaps. it in the chat. Oh, Perhaps. yeah. Yeah, maybe chill. Well, Stop consuming the whole meeting. Send, sending an email. I didn't come to a meeting sit to discuss sending an email. Come on now. <laughs> well, Charlie, should we move on with Jenny? Go ahead and move on. Um, okay, anyway, um, and I also liked in that poem, the poem to New Glory, calling the globe liberty. When I say liberty, the globe won't tumble. And, um, and then, um, so there are some themes, you know, that are throughout all three poems, which he started, my relative. And like, for example, free freedom and peace and gloriousness of the flag and all together, you know, our great planet, all one people. The planet being all one people was my idea. He had said, you know, Americans were all one people, you know. Anyway, so I it sounded like you guys thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. Both of those. Mm -hmm. That's Here interesting. Yeah. So you want to replace the American flag with the flag normally used by the green eco people? Yeah. Um, I'm very interested in different flags and different graphics and stuff, you know, especially of people who are. Looks like you want one world government. Well, I feel that, um, I mean, don't get me started. <laughs> I just wrote this like five, I wrote a five page essay on this. <laughs> it's called, um, actually Charles, it was, it was um, inspired by you because you had the idea of the, um, to the future class of 21. And so, okay. yeah, remember when we did that? A few weeks yeah. ago, yeah. And so since then, I I was working on my idea, and I came up with this essay for college uh, students rather than like high school students, which the first poem was for. So um, here, hold on a second. So I start out and say, um, to the college class of twenty one. Peace doesn't come from quietude, from standing like a tree. Creation is its action mood. So let the spirit free. And then I say, your lives may well create the first experience of all humans aware of each other at the same time. Nobody knows what this will exactly mean. Nobody can see it. But the future must be incredibly beautiful and emotionally moving, this creation of yours. <clears throat> I can hear it echo in the heart songs of all of us earthlings today. Writer Pearl Buck said, all things are possible until they are proved impossible. And even the impossible may only be so as of now. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then I go on and... Um, I end it with this, um, this uh, couple of paragraphs, um, actually three paragraphs. So we can take the, I, I, I talk about how we can uh, deal with the future. And then I say, so we can take the responsibility to save ourselves, each other, and our home. We can be in charge, or we can leave it to our God, wimp out, and continue ignoring our duty to care for his garden. Why not act like we are in love with the world, our home? You can figure out celebrations for the planet. Think big. Don't let yourself be held back by imitating my generation's negativity. Many people would say you were put on this earth for a reason. Look at Greta Thunberg, the well-known 18-year-old from Sweden who speaks for climate control on a planet with a future. Or our own Amanda Gorman, Poet extraordinaire, telling it the way it is with grace and power. Okay, last paragraph is, 
we older people know that there can be lovely experiences here and we want to secure them for you in the future. We have dignity. We want to feel good about the world we bequeath to you. How about a new relationship to authority, being it? Who will act as the superheroes of your age? How about every person alive? You right now should be asking us Generation Xers and baby boomers to share with you for everyone's benefit. Instead of singing, all we are saying is give peace a chance. Not that I disagree with that, but it could be replaced by you shouting to everyone, we are demanding, get up and dance. Thank you. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very, very interesting. From, from a short walk from Penny mm -hmm. Lane, I, I quite like the ending. No? <laughs> oh, was that coming? From a, uh, I live in a short walk from Penny Lane, and I quite, I quite like the ending. <laughs> The thing is, like a good Penny good Lane. What did, I didn't understand. Well, it's ended with the Beatles reference, some reference, and I thought I just thought, thought I quite Lane like the ending. The Beatles. Oh, you like the ending? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> That's actually on my website. If you ever want to read it, the whole thing is on my website. What is your website? My website is fools for they do not take the long view dot site s-i-t-e fools they do not take the long view dot no, site. no 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 fools for they do not take the long view dot site it's in the welcome section uh to the college class of 21 oh okay i'll have to pull it up and show show the audience are oh, you going to show it yeah it's called fools of all Oh, yeah, no spaces or anything. No, okay, fools. Fools for they do not. <laughs> fools for they do not. Take. Can you put that in the chat? Yeah, uh, yeah it probably okay. easier to put it in the chat so we can all access it. Fools, fools do not take. No, no, fools, fools for, for, they do not for, they, for they do not take the long view. That's can you put that in the chat? For everybody, I will. I will. <coughs> okay. Jenny, are you were you like an English teacher, or you developed curriculums for? No, for you, you flatter me on. <laughs> oh, I, just I, as I used a, um, to be an English teacher. Mm -hmm. Jenny, just what? a small thing on, on on the first poem. Um, I, you you mentioned the word strand. I don't know if it's different in American English. But English, uh, 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 English, the uh, strand is generally referred to as a, the shoreline. Oh, That's the shoreline. The shoreline, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, actually, I just kind of assumed that that might um, be. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Calvin. That's that's helpful. I didn't actually was too lazy to look that up. I thought I there's a there's a, a song um, Johnny Todd. It's a local song. Look, Johnny Todd took a walk and a wall along the Liverpool Strand, and it's 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 it, it's the it's a, it's the shoreline. Okay. But I don't know. It might be definitely hmm. Webster's. I don't know. Oh yeah. Well, like I say, I haven't looked it up yet, so <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Okay, very good, very good. So do you want to move on to the next thing then? Yes, uh, what okay. is, which one is it? Um, okay, it's the National Endowment for the Humanities. The only, one with just the three questions on it? Um, it's this only sword or 250 word two. Huh? I have NEH only word. Yeah, that one. Okay, hang on, I'll get it up in a second here. All right. Thank you, Tim. I'm trying to Jenny, what what does your website um where did you get that name? What does that refer to? Well, I'll tell you. Um I read this fabulous book. This book is called Woman and Nature. It's by Susan Griffin. And it uh lays out it kind of defines patriarchy and all its manifestations through kind of like poetic words. 
And um, she had, one of her chapters was called, or was um, a quote from, she said it was from Empedocles, Fools for that do not take the long view. And I was like, wow, I'm gonna look that up. So I tried to look it up, I couldn't find anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I say on the website that, uh, I say that on the website that I had you know, given the credit to her for thinking of that and saying it was Empedocles, whatever, you know. Yeah, I got it up. That's what you wanted. Okay. Yeah. What, what does that mean? So kind of uh, men or whatever, or the patriarchies or uh, what does that mean? Women and nature. What, why do you like the expression? Uh, fools for they do not. Take okay. Fools for they do not take the long view. I just like, because it seems like people who don't take the long view are fools. Now you could say that I'm a fool for calling other people fools, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's, that you can criticize me for using that. But anyway, um, it was in her book and the book, like I say, <coughs> defines um, patriarchy rule by men and, and male, um, male thought. And it just mm -hmm. sexism. I mean, it doesn't say that men are bad, you know, but, mm -hmm. It does mm -hmm. talk about our institutions that um, in the past were um, sexist. And I'm telling you, it's a really good book. It's, it's my, mm. favorite book, my favorite book. Susan, what's her last name? Susan? Last name um, is Griffin, G-R-I-F-F-E-N. Okay. Okay. I'll look at it. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are the best arguments, what are the, well, better arguments? interesting perspectives on uh, male privilege I came across and it doesn't come from the social sciences it's from engineering a man is 60% more likely to survive a car crash than a woman wow because, nice. the, because they only use male test crash test dummies and 12 year old child there's no <laughs> female there's no woman crash test dummy so therefore you're 60 percent more likely to die in a car crash than a man wow and that is engineering fact it's not social sciences it's fact uh -huh. yeah that's it's engineering the fact there i saw a great there's a great um movie uh but and it's about bell hooks on patriarchy and it's she's teaching um it's how these men in a prison who are there for life for murdering someone, um, they kind of go through this consciousness raising class of, um, and I never forget one said, he goes, well, I understand, you know, that patriarchy didn't do me any good because I end up killing somebody to defend myself and now I'm in jail. And he goes, but I would still recommend my son take on some machismo to defend himself on the schoolyard. <laughs> You yeah. know, it, it just, I thought it was funny how uh, the patriarchy really is a, a kind of problem that, that well, uh, you know, know I failed to see. We're animals, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the way that our bodies are, you know, I mean, one of my thoughts is that um, if there were only a couple versions of people, think how easy it would be when you met somebody to like have to get to know them and get, get past the color and the height, you know, and the eye color and just, you know what I'm saying? It's like right now where there's so much diversity. Sex. In a way that's great, but <laughs> right. you know, in a way that's, mm -hmm. that's more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. I, yeah. One of my favorite mentors says, it's, it's not about the sex. We would be talking, he goes, I hope not, <laughs> you well, know, but it's, it, it defines a lot, you know, of what, what happens to us, right? Our identity. Yeah. We'll have okay, so let's, should we get back to these questions here? Yes, uh, I'm sorry, All I'll right. get right back up there and share screen here in a minute. There we go, and uh, we're set. Okay. Um, okay, so the questions are, what does it mean for a union to be made quote unquote, more perfect. What roles do the humanities play in fostering, quote unquote, a more perfect union? And what are the roles and responsibilities of citizens and government in a democratic society? 
And I came up with answers for these questions. And I thought we could all talk about it and see what other people think. Mm -hmm. Right. So do you want me to go ahead and share the first one that I came up with? Um, yeah, if, you're, if you're, you're speaking right now, I think we'll all think about these and comment them on in, in the chat or in the rebuttal period. So go ahead and share your answer. Okay. Uh, what does it mean for a union to be made more perfect? It means it, do we want to put this up now, actually, Tim? Because I, because I, you have this. Okay, that's, uh, that would be the uh, NEH is 250 word two, right? Right. Okay, I'll get that up in just a second here. All right, thanks. And let me get that up here in a second. I'll have it ready to go. All right. What? Where is that in the Declaration of Independence? The more perfect union, is that right? Or um, that is the original good. context? Yeah, that is a good question. Um, uh -huh. What is it? I was hoping other people would know. Is it the, not the Bill of Rights? Well, but... it's bad English for a start. <laughs> I think... okay, what? Here's... It's bad what English that? for a start. Mm -hmm. So your, it's like more perfect. It's bad it's English. Perfect. It's, <laughs> I it's think like it's Thomas Jefferson. This is this um, is this is even more unique. It's a misnomer. Mm -hmm. It's it's what? It's like saying something is more your unique. Your accent. Oh yeah. Either, it's, 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 either something's <laughs> perfect or it's not. You can't make something perfection is perfection. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> it's just bad English. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it is kind of an ideal, you know, Thomas Jefferson, I think that's the Declaration of Independence. I need to look at it. <laughs> oh, I have a copy somewhere. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, um, I mean, that's not what I'm going to say. It, 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 it ranks up with that to probably go. All right, uh, go ahead, uh, Jenny, and uh, yeah, sorry, uh, on your things. Um, okay. So my answer for the first question is, it means it gets more progressive, more able to adapt, change, and grow in the future. It ensures that there is a future. Like a couple having children, improving a union lets its members be heard, developing themselves and their legacy. It is the work of life itself. Okay, uh, what hmm? I, I suppose you're going to comment on that a little bit. Who, me? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or unless you just want to go to the next two questions. <laughs> uh, well, if we go to the next two questions, we can always come back to the first one. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, let's I got move the move 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 other two. You want to hear the other two? Okay. Uh, number two, what roles do the humanities play in fostering a more perfect union? Answer. The creative process of the humanities uses play. It enriches and explains, illustrates ourselves to ourselves so we can figure out where we are and where to go. If you include anthropology, we can use the humanities to study and see each other so we can reach out and touch and hold hands with each other for comfort and company as we try to go forward and ascend. So obviously I'm like interpreting this in, in a kind of psychological, um, you know, manner. But I come from an anthropology background and uh, that, may be, that may be what, and also um, kind of social work background. Um, not that I am a social worker, but my mom and her, uh, Nate R. And I've, I see a therapist um, three times a week now. And I've seen her for 30 years. <laughs> Can you believe that? Anyway, that's true. <laughs> and um, she's very helpful. Okay, let's go to the last one and then we can come back. Okay. I just said uh, nature was calling my apologies. Oh, yeah. No problem. Nature was just calling. So let's get that last one up if I can. Uh... Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. No problem. What are the roles and responsibilities of citizens and government in a democratic society? 
answer. Society means we live near each other together. Therefore, we intersect and interact, which means we need each other's help. We have sense and can perceive others' talents in taking care of us. We need to empower them to meet our needs. Together, we can get work done and enjoy ourselves and each other too. As citizens, we should learn about our, ta our own talents so we can help our neighbors, the rest of us um, humans and our home, Earth's environment. Citizens must share their joys and sorrows in order for the representatives to cooperate, acting to move things along, getting needs met while enjoying life. Democratic government needs to modify itself or be changed from time to time to keep up with differences in needs and conditions in order to serve the voters and the environment, including children. It needs to learn who it is serving. The future should be listened for and heard. Education of all community members is thus vital. The old in the potentials of the youth and the young in their elders and their elders' natures and accomplishments. Also, celebration should be a major aspect of the democratic society. If not fun, why not? Okay, do you want that up for a while or can I? Uh, uh, I, I can keep it up for a while. Okay. okay. All right, thanks, Jim. Where did you get the inspiration for these qu answers to your questions from? Pam, well, um, are we in questions yet? Huh? Sure. Yeah, okay. Now this whole thing is kind of a discussion. Every Everything I'm sharing with you guys is kind of a discussion type thing. So. Why don't we let it summarize and then go to formal questions? I think so. Okay. okay. If you want to, if you got another one to wrap it up with, we'll uh, go into general discussion afterwards. Okay. Um, yeah, actually I do. Um, I was trying to think of what human needs are. And um, Tim, I think you have my basic human needs list. I'll get that up now. Okay, thanks. Bear with me, please. I, I wanted to comment that I think that was Abraham Lincoln's um, Gettysburg Address, right? I, four score and seven years ago. Um, I, so it, it's kind of interesting, the historical context uh, of that one that, um, you know, and you kind of did the same thing like with your grandfather, you, you, uh, you know, are kind of taking the old uh, kind of historical and bringing it to today, which, which is interesting, you know. Um, yeah, I was thinking. Uh, yeah. um, I was thinking of it on a kind of a um, emotional level, you know, because sometimes I feel like if you can make, mm -hmm. you can start with a concern for humanity, and then because um, you know we are people, <laughs> and try to um, have it be peaceful and constructive, and you can see what you think of. I think I think that's just in general a good direction. Now here we go. We here we have these basic human needs are. Now we can totally discuss this, and I'm not. I didn't mean that this was a definitive list. It was just something I kind of did as a little project for myself. But I thought that I would share it with you all. So you've got uh, basic human needs: shelter, privacy, protection, relief, naps, crying, sex, sleep, healthy available water. Toilet relief, and then um, I learned I've learned in my life I'm 55 that um, the Muslims, the Thai, and the French don't use toilet paper. They have a, alternative systems involving water, and that may be better for us than um, our system where we, uh, you know, tear down trees to make toilet paper. Anyway, bathing, laundry, massage, touch, sex, healthy food. And then I said, um, my boyfriend has used the Chicago Charities and they have a list of food guidelines that I think is pretty good. And then um, rehab from society back to the world. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds of rehab. 
And I can relate to this because of my psychological rehab. Substance addiction, education, exercise, um, aerobic, martial arts, dance, stretching, yoga, weightlifting, exercise, props, flipping, cartwheels. It just goes on and on. And that's what, what life is about, right? All that stuff makes us feel good. And we should feel good. You know, pleasure is very important, as I say in my uh, future class um, thing. Um, anyway, identity is a basic human need. Structure, um, compassion, using virtues, contributing to improving the world, community, society, uh, interviewing, talking with other people, documentation, I think is important. If you're trying to make progress, you know, it's important to understand where you are and where you go and how you can help other people. Uh, viewing, hearing, participating in art and music, singing, traveling, um, visiting museums and uh, attractions and sharing insights. And I think there's one more page of this, right? Jim? Um, yeah, right there. Yeah. Clean air to mm. breathe. And we don't have that in Chicago right now. And it's a real problem. If I ever get to be president, that's going to be my priority is air. Clothes making, uh, collaborating on clothes, you know, because we do see each other. We have eyes. And so it would be nice if everybody was wearing some really beautiful clothing. That would be an, an inspiring piece of artwork. I wrote to um, Kamala Harris about this because she's trying to get involved with Guatemala. And Guatemala has a bunch of uh, really talented um, uh, women, indigenous women who make amazing fabric and they make uh, very wonderful products out of it. And right now I'm kind of bumming because I don't know where to get that stuff. I used to have some clothes but they um, got lost. And so I want to get that. I want to, um, I was telling her, I wish you and Joe would just wear those clothes, you know, that would be a nice um, gift to Guatemala, who is our neighbor. Um, anyway, um, you know, you can see what it says there choosing, gifting, shoes, washing, shoulder, backpacks, etc. Transport is a human need scooters, trains, bikes, moving sidewalks skateboards, elevators, etc. Game making, game playing, humor sharing. Um, we could do some humor sharing with other countries too, people from across the world, you know. In fact, I'd like us to have a world language made out of all different languages, like the funny parts or the interesting parts, you know, like the sound, the expressions or whatever. Um, okay, movement, dance places, counseling, psychodynamic, self-psychology, psychoanalysis. Those are all things that my uh, family and my therapist had been trained in. Uh, oh, Alexander Technique and Feldenkrais are two things that I've discovered. Um, they're about helping you live in your body better and um, moving more healthfully, just, just like, you know, getting up from sitting or just walking across the room. Um, I live near an Alexander Technique uh, practitioner and I've had two different Feldenkrais counselors and they have helped me with um, injuries that I've had, like getting back to, um, to health after injuries. And um, I have this book right here, check it out. I just got this book the other day. It's called The Foot Fix. And it's um, four weeks to healthier, happier feet. And this is for anybody with problems like bunions, like I have, or even anybody who wants to prevent problems. And it's good stuff. I haven't started it yet. I've just been reading her uh, diagram about the, the, the um, foot structure. See, here she is. Wait, hold on. Here's the lady. And um, the good thing about this book is that she has illustrations with 
people not only with people with light skin, but also with people with dark skin, which is logical. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's what I came up with for basic human needs. And I think it's important to think about that stuff, like for our mayor in Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, um, she did something which I think is controversial, which is she turned off all the water fountains in parks and stuff. And um, I don't think she's turned them back on yet. I'm not sure. But I was telling people that this was a problem for me. And they were like, oh, well, it's understandable because of COVID. And we used to, in Chicago, we used to have um, drinking fountains outside that would be constantly running. So you just go up to them and then you take a drink and you don't even have to push the on button or anything. And it seems to me that that's not, that would not be a problem uh, for COVID transmission, you know? So I'm kind of annoyed with her. I want to talk to her and tell her to shape up, you know? And then the other thing is, listen to this. The other night I was watching, um, our public station, public TV stations, uh, Chicago Tonight program. And they have these two women on there. And one of them is doing this effort called the Period Collective. And it's a group that tries to make uh, menstruation supplies available for free in schools. Because what's happening is that these poor young women can't afford to buy that stuff when they need it. And so then when they have their period, they just stay home from school, mm -hmm. you know? Isn't that mm -hmm. helpful? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think that th thinking about basic human needs is just a springboard for what changes we want to see in the world, you know? Mm. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. um, so Jenny, are you formally done now and are willing to go? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's pretty well, much it. Well, I think on just what just on that uh, water fountains one. Was, All right, let's uh, take you, our, you maybe a bit. Let's thank our speaker. Thank you, me. thank you. J before I forget, maybe better um, feel a bit guilty because I did kind of like think I was going to try and campaign for some of this, and maybe I should, maybe start should. Um, in my daughter's district in Manchester, another town, uh, they. Put just that, put in a few parks and stuff like that. Um, a wet place where you can fill your water bottle up, right? And it's not a fountain, you just you put it there and, and you it's so there's no disease carrying whatever. You, you just fill your water bottle up, uh, on a in a, in a fountain because they've all disappeared now. The fountains in Britain, you know, and we have to go and buy bottles of water, you know, in case yeah. of plastic, yeah. <laughs> All right, are we in question mode, Tim? We, we yes, we are, mode. Charlie. We're going to officially start question mode now. And explain that following that will be the comment period. Right, go ahead and explain what that will be, Charlie. Okay, we're going to go to questions. Okay, let, me, let me excuse myself here for one second. I have 24% left on my computer, but you know what I can do? I could plug it in, right? Yes. But I didn't think about it. Yeah, let me plug it in. Okay, so we're doing, okay. we're we're doing the question that, uh, period. One or two questions each. Then we go to a comment period. And I give you a couple minutes, everybody. Tim will give everybody a few minutes to comment. And the speaker will have her final say. All right, let's thank you very much. Jenny, let's go to questions. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, who has the first question? <clears throat> Michael, you want to comment on anything real quick or have the first question? Um, in her poem, she has um, new glory. Is that implying a new kind of flag? Yeah. That's that's for the world flag, Michael. Oh, the world flag. Yeah, that's what the one for the world flag. Is that uh, what would the world flag look like? Well, that's a good question. It would have a photograph of Earth from space, and obviously, you can't fit that on. Um, you can't fit the entire world on one flag. <coughs> a photograph. 
So what it would have is like maybe every year it would change. So they would be from a different angle. So you'd see the planet from a different angle, right? So like this year you'd see like North America and South America. Next year you'd see like Europe and Asia and Africa, you know? And then the year after that, you'd see like the North Pole. And then you'd see the South Pole in Australia. So um, my idea is to be able to read these poems and um, when they take, they're supposed to do another moon mission for the first woman to walk on the moon in 2024. It's called Artemis, the Artemis moon mission. And um, if they do that, I would like them to take up a world flag and replace the United States flag that's up there with a world flag. And if you have a world flag, uh, how does that fit in with uh, flags of particular nations? Like, for example, if you have a march in any given country, which we obviously do, uh, would the world flag then be prior to, uh, be more prominent than the, a particular nation's flag? I don't think that would make the world powers too happy, would it? Um. Well, okay, putting a flag on the on the moon, there's only gonna be one flag up there. I think if everybody agreed on that, we could put the world flag, you know? But um, right now I learned in government class that you're not supposed to put any flag higher than the United States flag. You know, like if it's a Chicago flag or a, a Cook County flag or whatever, and it's supposed to, the um, United States one is always supposed to be the top. Right, high. right, right. Yeah. So the world flag, I would say, just do it like that. Just have the world flag be the top for everybody. If we could agree on that, you know. Well, good luck if you have the world powers. Yeah. Well, we, we do have like, you have, have something like the Olympic flag. Huh? We have the Olympic flag. We have the Olympic flag, well spoken. That's true. Oh, by the way, Jenny, so just a little side, I sent you a link on, uh, Chat there uh, to the to the water fountain I was talking about. Oh, okay. Uh, there's an article, little article about it. Great. So you're Jenny, uh, I'm sorry, Jenny. Uh, you've heard of? Have you heard of the psycho uh, anthropologists Cluckholm and uh, Murray? Mm -hmm. They have a book on personality, and they've got a oh, phrase. Oh, every every uh, person is. Um, in a sense, like everyone, in a sense, like someone, and in a sense, unique. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, I, I would take a look at, it's a book, book called Personality by Clyde Cluckholm, and um, I forgot the first name, but it's uh, Murray, Murray and Cluckholm. They have that statement. And it's also similar to Hillel um, in Jewish thought, who says, um, who talks about the self, and the other question. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, well, it was okay. So Cluckholm and Murray. Mur Murray. M U R R A Y, I think. Okay. And then um, what was Hillel. Hillel. Oh yeah. <coughs> you you probably have heard of the very famous statement, "If I am for myself alone, who am I?" and if I am not for myself, who will be for me? You may have heard of that. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Is that from Hillel? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I think it's from Hillel, yeah. That's a Jewish writer? Yes. Okay. It's my nephew's uh, middle name, so I should know. <laughs> All right, Jenny, I got a question. Sure. I was watching the guys that stormed and destroyed the United States Capitol on January 6th. And throughout the crowd, there must have been flags, US flags, all over the place. Is that what the flag stands for? Trumpism? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, good point. It was hijacked. So they're not using it properly? Well, you know what? They do have their own little flag with the blue stripes, the black, white, and blue. Have you seen that, Charles? Yeah, but they carry American flags. They were, in fact, 
you there, there's a, I just saw a photo of the guy sitting in Nancy Pelosi's office, and he had an American flag. Uh, uh, they were saying with them. He yeah. Got American to take their that office over. Yeah, well, that is the question. You know, do we, but on the other hand, I don't like to say that people who are into violence are going to um, have my flag as their flag. You know what I mean? So, but we have to get along somehow or else, you know, we have to kill each other. So we have to figure that out. And maybe, I, I don't know, are you saying that maybe the time for the United States flag is over with? Well, let me switch it to another thing. In your question, things you you said the flag stands for more perfect union, but a lot of people think we should get back to the founding fathers, and we're not doing what's in the Constitution. The guys who wave flags always—if you see a flag, you know that's what they're standing for, isn't it? Yeah, first of all, I don't think I said that um, the flag was a uh, stands for the more perfect union, you know, but um, yeah, I believe that some of the stuff are, my boyfriend has done a lot of research in history, American history, and I've learned that um, some of the stuff that these guys, our founding fathers were saying is just totally not how the country looks right now. You know, especially after this Trump situation, him hijacking, you know, our culture for his personal benefit. I mean, yeah. the flags are always seen at right wing rallies, like that yeah. conservative group used to have. Yeah. It's the emblem of conservatism. Yeah. Right. But do we have to, can't we take it back? I mean, do we have to get, let them go and run away with it? You know, it's our flag too. And I guess what I, what I also want to say is um, I feel that uh, in this essay I wrote about this, that um, we have to be ready for sudden change. Because if we're not going to have sudden change, change is not necessarily bad. But if we're not going to figure stuff out pretty soon here, we're going to be you know, going to hell in a handbasket, if they, as they say. Um, so maybe it's time to think about alternatives, you know, like a world flag. Maybe we should just, when we're thinking about a flag for ourselves, you know, have our, our identity be more than just a country, you know, have it be a whole planet, you know, go from the country, boom, all the way to the planet, you know, maybe that's the change we need to be um, thinking about. Maybe we should stop talking about saving the planet because the planet's gonna be go, doing fine without us. Uh, yeah, and start talking about saving humanity because that's that's what's what because the song of the future is might be. Does anybody here remember what ice was like? Sure. Well, I'll, I'll address that in my rebuttal tonight when we when we go into the rebuttal period. I'll, uh, I like uh, Jenny. I was just curious. Do you have like an anthem song that you like? that kind of encapsulates your views? Um, well, I, I got two things to tell you. Number one, I've rewritten that mo that song by Lee Greenwood, that guy who wrote God Bless the USA. Mm -hmm. I've rewritten that and it's on my site in the patriotic section. And also, um, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh, I found this Unitarian hymnal and it's got some really good hymns and I printed them out. Um, there's one called Harris <coughs> and it's basically, um, it's basically, um, you know, to hang, I have it, I can see if I can find it. To hang no banner on the wall, to fight for no cause, this is heresy indeed. You know? Yeah, I was just curious. Yeah, I really like that one. All right, well, that, that's good. Do you want me to look for it? I think I can find it. Um, if you want to tell me where it's at, it's on your, you said it's on your website? 
Actually, yeah, actually, that one is on my website. Um, it's under Verse, I believe. I'll take a look in the chat, see if I can put okay. it up here. Because right. I have, there's like four of them that I uh, put on my website from that hymnal. I just got to find out where, to, where it's at, so. All right, continue to continue to talk. I'm going to look for that song over while we're at it. So who's got the next question? Uh, Ellen, now be the time. Kevin, Charlie. Sure, you know, it's Kevin. Um, yeah, it all sounds very, but I, I, I mean, I, I liked what you did, and I like the idea of what you did, and um, it's it's very imagined. If you, if uh, I can, I mean, that's a compliment, but. <sighs> It doesn't, I mean, to, to, the first off, for me, to, the more, and it's not just because it's bad English, but it is, more perfect union. That presupposes that the union was perfect to begin with, which it wasn't. Um, it was at best a compromise by people who didn't want to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. and, what, and, and a whole lot of people wanted to own other people. Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, one way or another. Um, that's a good point. So, you know, you're, you're, you're basically, you know, I, I, I would look at, uh, for example, nearly 50 years ago, uh, Alistair Cook did a series on America and he was talking about when I, that, the first poem was written and they were looked, they, they, the government looked towards, went to Madison Avenue and they asked, can we get a slogan for everybody to be, to be fighting behind, you know, for the troops? And he said, well, for liberty and democracy was their first idea. And then he realized there's an awful lot of people in America that didn't particularly believe in too much liberty or democracy. So uh, God and country was a good one, um, but not everybody believed in God. And there's an awful lot of sections of, sections of American society where the country hasn't been particularly nice to them. Um, so in the end, they came up with for mom and apple pie. Oh, wow. Um, I think what what we need is a concept like mom and apple pie that everybody can get behind. Uh, I think as things get bad, it's gonna we're gonna get more tribal. And if you don't think we're tribal, take a look at the demographic here tonight. We're all middle aged white people. Hey uh, Jenny, where is that uh, verse at on your site? Is there is in, in the religious section, I'm thinking? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll look. Okay, thanks. But if you're looking for a good song to kind of encapsulate what I think what you might be going for, I would go for Harry Chapin's The Song That Made America Famous. What is that? Harry Chapin, one of the best Americans I, 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 I've come, ever come across. Harry Chapin, The Song That Made America Famous. Wait, which is what song? The oh. song that made America famous. Which is what? The, no, that's what it's called. Oh. <laughs> what made America famous? The song that made America famous. And it's that's what he called it. It's it's as all a, it's a story song as all as Harry Chapin's songs were. I thought it was Solidarity Forever. Huh, yeah. Go figure. Are you um, speaking of Tim? Uh, Jenny, I'm still looking for it. I just didn't find it. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember Harry Chapin at all. Then why don't you monitor the meeting? Isn't that slightly more important? I'm monitoring the meeting, Charlie, and they've had some good discussions. Yeah, they are. Come on. Oh, I just found it, you guys. I just found it. Multitask. Go ahead. Okay. So there's a few of them. There's four of them. Can I just go ahead and read them? Go right ahead if you want. Yes. Okay. And this is from like the 1600s, the man of integrity. How happy is he born or taught who serveth not another's will, whose armor is his honest thought and simple truth, his highest skill, whose passions not his masters are, whose soul is still prepared for death, untied unto the world by care of public fame or private breath, who hath his life from rumors free, 
whose conscience is his strong retreat, whose state can neither flatterers feed nor ruin make oppressors great. This man is freed from servile bonds of hope to rise or fear to fall. Lord of himself, though not of lands, and having nothing, yet hath all. What is that poem from, or where? What it's is a that? song. It's a song called "The Man of Integrity," <laughs> and it's something you like, or is yeah. that, that and just one? Yeah, I, I yeah. see. Yeah, that. Um, I, I have a question. What? What is your? Um, what was your grandfather's background, and uh, and you know, is there kind of a religious or a, a cultural um, continuity? that, you know, the context of poetry and love of, of ideas like that? Um, what do you attribute well, it? I can tell you that um, my grandfather, my great grandfather was a, a inventor and um, he invented the machine that they used to cut fabric for the fabric industry instead of a scissors, you know? <laughs> anyway, where so, was that? Um, where? In Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, okay. Huh. And then uh -huh. his his daughter is my grandmother on my dad's side. And she was involved with, um, she's been to like 75 countries, she died. But she had been to a lot of different countries just on her own and with her husband. And um, she worked for the Lyndon Bain Johnson uh, Library in, in Texas as a volunteer. And she was involved with the uh, um, DAR, Daughters of the American Revolution. Okay. And uh, the women's, what's the vote, or what's the, oh, uh, the University Women, AAUW. A yeah. Okay. So she that's was just, pretty cool, yeah. And then I, dad, <coughs> that's what I was wondering that uh, I'm just gotten involved with the daughters, uh, Colonial Dames, and I'm finding it interesting to go back and, it can, it's making uh, poetry come alive. You know, I'm related to Sir Thomas Wyatt and you know, it just brings history, poetry and uh, it's a nice place to go to think about, you know, the problems of today from as similar to they were back then, you know, um, it really helps for me, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice, you know, rather than because you can be afraid of your own, you know, reality and, you know, the world's going to end if we don't start talking about climate change and, you know, get together. And um, so sometimes I have to just, I go back and think about, like, I was just uh, looking at the Constitution, which Charlie pointed out, but I guess we should have known that was the uh, preamble to the Constitution. And, um, you know, it's relevant because I, I said that a federalist is for the constitution and anti-federalist is against it and I'm against it. And I, but I can get so hung up on all my resentments toward this, uh, you know, what Charlie wrote last week online, you know, that my rights aren't natural rights. They're given to me by his constitution. And that's a kind of originalist idea that, so I'm reading that I'm thinking, Oh, how did Jefferson fight back against those guys? Um, but uh, it it seems like we always are going to have this uh, uh, kind of, um, you know, a, 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 to a certain extent, you know, this, you know, balance of power. I don't know. I don't think it's ever been a good idea. My favorite is Jamestown. Uh, there's a TV series, but when this the woman Margaret, she's probably Margaret Wyatt. Um, says to the other women of different types, she says, the men are screwing this whole thing up. <laughs> They're going after the money and the, you know, killing the Indians to get the money like the um, East India Company. I mean, and I recently read, you know, these crazy Federalist Society people are saying, um, you know, I see the world like the men of the East India Company, you know? And I'm like, yeah, like, a, you know, let's just go 
take it all for ourselves. It's a big corporation and it's mine, mine, mine. And meanwhile, you know, the planet's burning down and the women have to fight back. That's my, sorry if that's not a question. <laughs> can, I, can I respond? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that there are two things. If the world was alive, you know, some people say the world is Gaia. They call her Gaia and it's a she and she's actually a living organism. So if that's true, if I were the world, I would want my people, my human beings to do two things. One is to not have starvation because I am a um, naturally bountiful planet, you know? Number mm. two is to have no rapine. Rapine means the seizure of another's body or property. And I would have it uh, extend to a uh, mental rapine. You know, like um, advertising, <laughs> you know. I was in that field, I know. <laughs> yeah, I really. Until I got out of it, yeah, right. It's, you're right, it is the psychological operations. I mean, it, it really is warfare of, and, you know, of a raping terrorist kind, I think, you know. Um, so I, I think maybe that's why you're, you know, it's like you do the poetry and I, I read history and um, it's, it kind of calms the nerves to- um, Who's that person behind you there, Ellen? That's me, that, that's uh, my mother, uh, you know, um, had that painted, you know, but this was her whole Colonial Danes kind of uh, view of things, um, which it's interesting that um, basically, our, our home was invaded by this Republican, Trump, Fox News, you know, Cruella DeVille type woman <coughs> came in and, and my, they were both demented and, you know, says, oh, your father wants to marry me. And so I'm taking everything. <laughs> and it, it's so you kind of go back to, you know, you have to, I'm like, you know, I should have defended the castle better, mom, sorry. <laughs> you know? But then I go back and I look, you know, sir, Thomas Wyatt and Anne Boleyn, they cut off her head so that the sister, you know, so that he could have somebody. And I mean, women fighting against men is a really interesting um, historical thread, you know, <laughs> to look at philosophically, you know, how have women... Uh... The Baha'is, you know, Baha'i religion. Okay. They think that um, uh, people are like a goose where one side is the males and one side is the females. And you have to have both wings have to be strong to carry you so you can fly. Ah, that's a nice image. Yeah, there's, you know, there's this books, you know, women who run with the wolves. And I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, that was kind of the seventies and eighties. I think I, you look at young and, you know, all these, um, these ideas of the masculine and the feminine and they, it is a good thing, uh, I, you know, not to dominate, but I think- um, Who took Lewis it, and Clark over the mountains? Oh, what is that? Lewis and Clark who, who in the mountains? Who took Lewis and Clark over the mountains? Oh yeah, this Indian woman, right? Um, what was that's her true. name? Sakadoya, Sakadoya. Sakadoya, right? That's a, that's a great story. Yeah. Pocahontas, you know, really was there. It wasn't quite as- dramatic as we're taught it in school. <laughs> I mean, they're oh, romantic. But there are other examples. I'd like to ask our speaker something. Ted, okay. Charlie, go ahead. Uh, the American flag was designed uh, actually to identify American ships of war. And the Confederate flag that you always see is called the battle flag. The flags, the flag, the U.S. flag, generally identified with the military. I mean, if you went to a peace rally, anti-war peace rally, I don't think you'd see anybody flying an American flag. Isn't the American flag oh. kind of stand for militarism and and this uh, aggressive policy of the United States uh, colonization uh, overseas? Escapades? Um, 
I have a response to that, which is that the American flag has 13 stripes, right? Yep. Seven red and six um, white. Mm -hmm. Well, there are 13 months in the year uh, that correspond to the moon months, you know? And women's uh, biological cycles are also, there's also 13 uh, periods in the, in the year. So that's kind of cool that, that, you know, that our flag has that, <laughs> you know? Um, I'm so, you know, shut me down if I'm being a bit too much of a talker, but uh, no, Charlie, yeah, I, I do take you, Charlie, I, I do take your point on this one. Um, we get away from, for example, just flags, but symbolism, all right? And a few years ago, I had this uh, argument with a friend of mine on, on Facebook. And what happened was, I don't know if you know about Red Britain, uh, on the 11th of November every year, we have what's known as Remembrance Day. And it's celebrated, it's well, not celebrated, well, it's commemorate, we commemorate, it, it's, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, uh, what what you got? Arm, it's Armistice Day. What, what's what's yeah, the Yeah, Puppy um, Day, Armistice Day. We have it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they sell pop. You know, it's in Penny Lane. The song. Uh, a pretty nurse is selling poppies from a tray. They they, they sell poppies for the British uh, British Legion, which helps out uh, with the veterans. Yeah. Right. From now, a, a couple of guys from Northern Ireland, from Belfast, posted on Facebook, them burning a poppy. Right. And they were, this was a few years back, and they were prosecuted uh, under hate speech, inciting uh, Ivan, and they got three months in jail. Uh, my friend said, well, yeah, you know, well, they did wrong. I said, well, it's just a symbol. You know, it's, it's <coughs> but the fact that Muslim terrorists will do this as well doesn't mean that Bernie could, you know, the difference between a terrorist and a freedom fighter depends on which side you're on, you know? And these guys from Northern Ireland, they looked, they, rightly or wrong, if, and, and if they were not in jail, I might have engaged them on Facebook if I'd have seen this and talked to them about this. Um, but they got three months in jail for burning a poppy. Now it's a symbol. Wow. But... If you take it from their context, they live in Belfast, and the British Army was seen as an occupying force. The poppy also represents to them the British Army, and they did they did it, it's a it's a form of protest. Now, if I remember, George Bush uh, Jr. was going to try and write it as the Constitution the, the uh, against the law to burn the American flag. Um, perhaps a little bit more extreme than taking the name, but you know, it's the same thing. If we invest so much in symbols, the charge is quite exactly right. Most flags start off as battle colors. You know, there's a rank in the British Army called Color Sergeant, whose job it is to look after the, the, the colors of the regiment. Uh, that's where most flags come from. Mm -hmm. Um, it's 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 proclaiming an identity, uh, and is by nature tribalistic. Hmm. So that's interesting. So that you're saying it's tribalistic, and tribes implies that there are more than one group of people together, right? There's yeah. more than one tribe, right? So yeah, it's flag, tribalistic. Yeah, flags were battle symbols. Meaning, if you if you took the flag, you won the battle. Yeah. yeah. It goes back even to ancient Rome, the battle standards. Yeah, yeah, the, the Roman standard. Yeah. I'm a soccer fan, and um, it's so fun to see the different flags and the different colors of the different countries who are who are uh, playing together. You know. We have the Liverpool has the best song. The best one? Yeah, you'll never walk alone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Does anybody want to hear the rest of these hymns? There's like one. Yeah, let, let, let's, let's go, look. go ahead. Okay. Uh, Heresy Indeed. This one was written by this guy in 1785. 
It is a piteous thing to be enlisted in no cause at all, unsworn to any heraldry, to fly no banner from the wall. This were a greater sin against that hostage in your living breast than to arouse the world incensed at something you believed your quest. To take the smooth and middle path, the half heart interest and the creed without extreme of hope or wrath. This would be heresy indeed. Mm. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, here's those another. Are, those are hymns, you say? Yeah, are they're, they... hymns. they're hymns, yeah. From, I, from... I read music, so I, I you know, I, uh, I just wrote them out for myself and um, I have them, they're on my website, like I said. Anyway, here's another one. Not only gold, but men. This is attributed to Jeremiah Clark in 1707. Not gold, but only men can make a people great and strong. Men who for truth and honor's sake stand fast and suffer long. Brave men who work while others sleep, who dare while others fly. They build a nation's pillars deep. They lift them to the sky. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Man making. This is the same Jeremiah Clark guy. We are all blind until we see that in the human plan, nothing is worth the making if it does not make the man. Why build these cities glorious if man unbridled goes? In vain we build the work unless the builder also grows. Mm -hmm. it, I, I'd like to make a comment that, you know, you're, it's interesting, you know, how Charlie, uh, you know, proposed that flags are, you know, um, war and, and there is that aspect of it. But it also, um, you know, your, these hymns, uh, you know, like it makes you realize, you know, religion and the role that it played, um, you know, to, there was this honor. Uh, actually, one of my lines of my father's side seems to be from from Robert E. Lee and I think it's interesting I, and it turns out they came over on the same boat with Thomas Wyatt in 1647 37 and but they um the two came together you know and i it's now that there's this 1619 project and um you can you know the I'm so frustrated that they want to divide us and say oh you know Blacks are, you know, we're just, we just wanted them to be slaves and, and there was hatefulness because there was also, and I think it was more from the female side, um, but there, yeah. you know, females controlled a lot and that, you know, there was, um, you know, loving and mothering and building and changing and affirming and, you know, um, there was a lot of integration and, uh, and that, that's that kind of God side of the brain. I think that, um, the ideals and the the teaching and all these things, uh, the value of poetry and uh, hymns and congregations and anthems and uh, you know if I you know and I do think like it's interesting they're taking down the statues of Robert E Lee and and I it's like um, he was not a bad person they they wanted to, there a lot of people would say Jefferson nothing but a slaveholder and I'm like. He was, you know, actually, you know, his slaves cheered when he came, you know, so there's two sides of the story, but this idea of dividing and conquering us is, was a strategy of tension planned by Carl Schmidt for the Cold War to bring about the Fourth Reich. And I wish we would stop it. And that's why I come to these free speech forums, just in the hope that, that we can stop, you know, Green Party versus, you know, Libertarian and, um, and just kind of look at each other like a family, because you know why not? That's the only hope we have, and um, I hope it comes about through a kind of dialectic for the good rather than a dialectic for the bad. You know, and so that's what I like about your talk. Well, thank you. Mm. Um, can I respond? Yes, please. please. Jenny. 
All right, great. So if you read that essay on my site about the future class, um, I talk about different stages of humanity and uh, this idea, my, I had that idea. And then I read something about the Baha'is again called um, uh, Peace to the Peoples of the World, an essay, a Baha'i Statement on Peace. And it was written in 1985, but it was, it was really good stuff. Not only did it have the bird metaphor in it, but it also says that they believe that humans are coming of age right now. You know, we've been adolescent and now we're finally coming of age and it's looking like we may actually be able to pull off peace for the first time. And we never could do it before. We didn't have the capacity. We weren't mature enough, you know? And so I have a, the idea that um, the stages of humanity are um, the psychological stages correspond to a single human female <coughs> stages. And I'm a female, so I guess that, that was you know, what I thought of. But um, my idea is that um, we're in, right now we're in a metaphorical stage, the fourth age, um, where we're living with all these horrible metaphors like food, you know, people are eating such horrible things and nobody knows about nutrition and stuff. Healthcare, this country, uh, the United States, has such horrible, horrible overpriced and just not no preventative health care and work, you know, this the COVID thing where we're breathing the same air on this planet and yet we're making each other sick with that, you know, et cetera. Work, another metaphor. We need to get out of these metaphors and we can do it. What we need to do is, um, is concentrate on our biological uh, body symbolism, like our five fingers, our two sides, and grow out of the fascination with two plus two equals four, and two times two equals four. In other words, um, quit trying so much to find another person um, to relate to, and work on maybe finding a, a you know, moving on in life, in our love life, and, and getting out of our cocoons, and so we can fly around like butterflies, you know. <laughs> and uh, I talk about it, like I say, I talk about it in the essay and explain it. Um, I do think that the psychological uh, symbolism is an important aspect of it, you know. Like, if we can just change our minds and, and work on play, because play is a part, a very important part of um, creativity, you know? I learned that with my therapy, that I, my psychotherapy, yeah. And, um, and also I'm an artist, so that that's, comes from that too. But um, to, mm. to solve, and, and Einstein said, you know, we can't, we can't solve our problems with the same mindset that we <clears throat> created them, right? Mm. So anyway. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to be, and I kind of want to. Uh, I kind of want to step out here, so um, and I'm kind of tired. <laughs> <laughs> but can mm -hmm. I ask you guys one more one more hymn? Would that be okay? Yeah, feel free. Yes, please. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, hold on. Oh, here uh, we go. On Blake, and uh, then maybe we'll go to comment period. Okay, what makes a city great? This is um, circa 1700. What makes a city great and strong? Not architecture's graceful strength, not factories extended length, but men who see the civic wrong and give their lives to make it right and turn its darkness into light. What makes a city man can love? not things that charm the outward sense, not gross display of opulence, but right that wrong cannot remove and truth that faces civic shame to banish it in honor's name. This is a city that shall stand, a light upon a nation's hill, a voice that evil cannot still, a source of blessing to the land, its strength not brick, nor stone, nor wood, but justice, love, and brotherhood. 
<laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna um, I want to take off, and it was wonderful talking with all you people. And uh, Jenny, would you mind if I give you a Facebook re request? A Facebook <laughs> friend request. Oh, sure. That's fine. I'm not. Yeah. I don't do Facebook very much. I'm on Facebook. And it's just easy, it's just the easiest way for me to communicate. That's all. Right. And you won't see any pictures of me at dinner. <laughs> do friend me too, Kevin. I I'm interested in learning more about you. I'm Ellen Corley, and I'm I like. Facebook well, do you know what? Actually, it's probably easier if you if you Facebook me because I'm actually unique. I'm the only Calvin mattress in the world. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. There may be other Ellen mm -hmm. Cor Corleys. I, I should imagine. I don't know, not too many. You can tell by looking at the picture that um No, no I'm, I'm not talking most... about I'm talking about your, your, your personality, I'm talking about your name. Right. There are quite a few, I think. You're right. Yeah. Um no, I am yeah. actually Google because we all have. I'm, there's only one Calvin Matches, I'm afraid. <laughs> right, right. Have you been coming to the the conference, the college for a long time? Or no, this is my new? first evening. Uh, I, I did uh, take part in a Zoom thing a couple of weeks ago in the afternoon. For me, afternoon, it was morning uh, for you guys. Um, are you over yeah. in England? Or are you, you? Yes, I'm in Liverpool. You're in Liverpool. Which, is why, Liverpool. I was, which is why I was going to talk about, because I got about, you, you were talking about Jefferson and, um, and Robert E. Lee. Now, uh, first off, Robert E. Lee has already got his monument, and that's Arlington. Right, he doesn't need a statue, right? Well, they're, they're taking the, the statue because let's face it, he chose the wrong side, right? He did. I, yeah, I don't, it's just, it's kind of, I, it's like it, our news is so exploits our, it's trying to get us riled up, and you know, for this, party <coughs> yeah, but party uh, and, uh, um, okay, there's, I love Liverpool where I live, it's, it's, it's a quite diverse area. The, um, I say quite diverse. It's probably the most diverse area in, the, in you know, in the city. Um, and Liverpool was built on, a, on on slavery. It was part of the early slave trade up to about the late 1830s when it became outlawed in Britain. Um, but Liverpool was still making money off this. It was it was uh, you had the cotton you had Cottonopolis, which was Manchester, and that processed the cotton. And oh. Liverpool transported it. So it was sugar and cotton and it's a port, you know. Uh, right. So this house was built on the money from from slavery because it's 1860, this house. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, so we're well aware of our... You have to be aware of and acknowledge the wrongs that you've done before you can take credit in the rights that you did you know right right good point um, right mm -hmm. and especially yeah. especially to if, if you want to be inclusive you've got to say well well you know you, you can't whitewash literally the, the american history or, or british history right, or history right. in general you can't whitewash it you can't say well uh, uh you can say all right well it it doesn't really matter what what type of guy William the Conqueror was. We also we, we say call the second Beyonce because the French invaded England. <laughs> you know, right, right. I the issue that I think we have around the world is that, like right now, there there um, there's kind of a revisionist history, and our Supreme Court just is just taking away the this week the last of the. Voting Right Act, and um, they're, they're kind of like, okay, it's just little chink at a time. They're dismantling all the rights that were won in the you name You guys are going of, through some heavy times at the moment. Oh, um, and I, it's how are we going to stop it? Because it, it's such a, um, well, they've got the majority in the Supreme Court, and you're like, oh, majority rules? Well, when did that happen? And it, because it's it's actually goes back, the Catholic, the, a, a kind of corrupt, infiltration of you know this german catholic nazi cia and the mic you need a new bob dylan or new elvis yeah. 
What? You need a new Bob Dylan or a new Elvis. Yes, yes. Are, do, are you a musician? I see a guitar yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you you well, remind me of uh, the, who's the guy that's really been very active um, recently? Um, yeah, I know. Charlie, um, I, okay, Ellen, we're going into okay. rebuttals now, all right? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to do the first one. All right, yeah. let's thank our speaker. She's not okay. here. She's here. I think she's listening to us. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Very nice presentation of poems. Okay, I'm going to give a brief four-minute rebuttal on two things. One, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes music does inspire me, and I'm going to give you two very quick snippets of two tunes that I think almost everybody will recognize, which indicates to me freedom prosperity and all kinds of good stuff. And if you'll just give me a, a brief um, listen on this one, I think you'll both, you'll recognize them real quick. Uh, if I can just find the first one here, won't take but a second. First one is this one. That's the theme song for National Public Radio in the American version. Very inspiring for me. And of course, our British friends too will also know this one, I think, in just a brief second here. As you can see, I would imagine that uh, even even for me, who's a genuine nerd, songs do inspire. Yeah. And you know, sometimes <laughs> those are probably two of the most recognizable songs in the world. There are a lot of others that will inspire me over time, but when I hear those two theme songs, especially from NPR and the BBC, it always tells me good, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, the world's radio station. I don't like some of the newer versions, but those two were ones I grew up with in the 80s and 90s. And Tim, what do you, what you think of the, uh, the BBC News theme tune now? The, the modern one. The modern one? Uh, I just don't think it has the same... Uh, but it's based on... But you know the you know the pips we played at the beginning, ba, 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 ba. That, that 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 opening, that's what it's based around. The guy took really? the pips, and um, it, it's there. That if you play it, I think I got the latest version. Was this? Was this? Oh, is this oh, BBC, theme theme. BBC News theme tune. Invasion, compiling, military, Delhi. Is that the one you were talking about, or the latest one? The late, the BBC News. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it up. Yeah, I mean, it just, I, I, you know, I still hear it. I think I know which one you're talking about, but, you know, I always, it just, it's just for me. I always recognize that particular version, you know, of the BBC World Service theme. You know, I just. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to, I think I know which one you're talking about. Do, 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 that one, I think it goes. Ah. Folks, I, I really do have to step out now. But um, yeah. happy, happy Jenny. Independence Day. Yes, thank you, Jenny. I, I hope you to see you again here, too. I've been coming here for a while. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Ellen Corley at Gmail or something if you if you oh. write, you know, and okay. all right. All right. You live um, in Chicago, I'm, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this, we'll I'm gonna put that up for you, Tim. All right. That'll be great. Right. Thanks just to hear this one. It's on it's, it's on chat. It's on um, or I could play it and you can listen to it. Okay, go ahead. 
Okay. Um... Can't hear it, but. I haven't put it up, but hang on a second. It's going on to Okay, okay cool. Um, okay. Here it comes. All right. Oh, yeah. I I think I think I'll be able to pull it up a little bit now on the on on the one of the latest ones. Yeah. Well, I I think yeah I know what you're talking about. Okay, hang on. I think it's this one here, isn't it? No, that's not it. That's not, I know which one you're talking about. But he, he based it just on the pips. Pip, pip. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know. I, I I know which one you're talking about now. Okay. Uh, have fun, you guys. Take care, Jenny. Thank you for coming Thanks. tonight, and I hope you have a good. Switch it off now. Thanks a lot. You too. But anyway, that's not. That's even not. You know. But there's just a lot of a lot of good stuff that just simply inspires you. You know. And. For me, one of the other things that I like is uh, it was an old commercial that many of you people will recommend. And I'll play this real quick because I think a lot of this was what the basis of the environmental movement was on. And if I can just find it here. And I, I know you guys will like this real quick because a lot of you Are we going to see the Indian for the third time? What? Are it was a crying Indian song, Charlie, but you don't need to see it. All right, Charlie, based on your thing. Why don't you do it at the beginning, at, at the beginning? What, you mean the, the, the crying Indian commercial? The Indian, every week at the beginning, so we get it all done with. Well, Charlie, you know, the thing is, is that uh, you don't like video. All right, get guys, not I'm done with times. my commentary. Not at every meeting. Charlie, we're done. Charlie. You know, you're the only one who really violates the policies of one fool at a time and no personal attacks. And you're the moderator or the, the other co-owner of this thing. So let's move on. Who else has a rebuttal? Ernie, Ellen, Dan, Bob? What do you think about all this, Bob? Maybe he's not listening. But well, um, I, you know, the, the uh, flag bit was... Uh, <clears throat> kind of interesting because I've been thinking lately that I'm tired of uh, all these flags uh, being shoved down our throat everywhere you look. You know, you're like you know, we have to we have to live with these LGBT flags all the time. Now they have a new one, a new LGBT flags. It's got more transgender stuff in it. It's got like a there's like a I don't know like a series of triangles uh, on one end of it now uh, that's supposed to represent transgenders and. There's so much uh, bizarre transgender stuff being shoved down our throat. Uh, you know, I, I just don't think government has a role to be, you know, flying these tribal flags. Like the other day, uh, I walked past City Hall downtown and uh, Lori Lightfoot's flying the, the, the Pan-African flag out there the black, red, and orange, or whatever it is, black, red, green flag. And of course, the, you know, the, there's always, a, you know, the, the transgender flags, of course, we're all over the place in, in, in June. Um, but anyway, I, I don't think, uh, again, I don't think government agencies need to be flying anything other than, you know, like the American flag, or the state of Illinois flag, or the city of Chicago flag, you know, something like that. But I think they need to, to keep away from flying all these, you know, fragmented identity politics flags. Um, uh, so anyway, that, I just wanted to make a, make a point on that. Um, uh, too bad Jenny had to leave. I, I, I uh, remember reading part of her description earlier that you know, she was going to talk about uh, the needs of people and how we should address those needs and all that stuff. And again, that's that is basically that's that's altruism. That's you know part of uh, you know this collectivist thought. And uh, I wanted to uh, speak out against that and 
encourage people to read and watch videos about what Ayn Rand had to say about <laughs> altruism, uh, you know, because if we would, if we would limit, if we would limit government into what it actually, you know, was designed for, which is protecting our rights, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, from all enemies, foreign and domestic, and enforcing contracts, people would have a lot more money uh, that they would use. Pe people are benevolent and generous. And I think a lot of needs of others would be, you know, taken care of by, by, the, by that. And uh, instead though, uh, since we're, you know, we're basically coerced, you know, with the threat of force, Every two weeks, you know, the government's there digging, digging our, their hands in our paychecks uh, to fund all these goofball federal, you know, state and local programs. Uh, people are so strapped that they uh, they really can't give like they probably would, you know, if they didn't have all that, you know, all the you know the government on their back. All right, Bob. Anything else, or do we move on? Uh, to I can probably. Bob, I'd like to, re I'd like to, re to reply to, to Bob. Oh wait, I got a question on, on Jenny's bit. Oh, wait, I have a, I have a question for Calvin though, real quickly about the BBC. Now, I, I quit listening to NPR about I don't know four or five years ago because they they basically got taken over by the left wing uh, over here. Lies all all. Uh, so, uh, forgive me, forgive me. What's NPR? And, National and Public National, Radio. National Public Radio, yeah. It's like our equivalent of BBC. I okay. was wondering, is BBC uh, also, uh, you know, are, are they are they politically neutral or are they uh, have they been taken over by, you know, the Labour Party or the Conservative Party or something? Uh, it depends on who you talk to. If you talk to the left, you say it's been to totally taken over by the Conservative Party. If you talk to the right, you go say it's full of left-wing uh, liberals. <laughs> uh, if you talk to the, if you talk to if you talk to a Zionist, they they are anti-Semitic. If you talk to if you talk to uh, if you talk to somebody pro-Palestinian, they that they they're, they're totally uh, pro-Israeli. Uh, it's one of those they but they Dan Safan and are supposed to be autonomous, but they've got to go and cap it on to the government every year to get. Well, because the, the the way they're funded is unique and not worth carrot. Through a, through a television. So uh, it's it's yeah. Uh, um, it, they are they are the they are the beleaguered uh, kid in a, in a bitter divorce. So yeah, I, I had you know I had to stop listening to it. Uh, you know, like after Trump got elected. Yeah. Oh, they definitely got to Trump. I used to I used to listen to. Uh, Oh no, the BBC's got when, when I was shaving in the morning, and every morning, every day, day after day, it was Trump, Russia, Russia, Trump, Russia, Russia, Trump, Trump. Trump. Anyway, 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 Bob, could I just talk about like on Jenna's behalf? Because she had a very optimistic view of flags. And we can all take that down view of flags. They're battle, they're, you know, they're, they are like battle symbols. But it depends on what battle you're fighting. Now I, I was reminded of this. I, in March in 2020, I took a huge leap. And, and it was like, this is the beginning of the pandemic. We're in full lockdown. Nobody knew what was going on. Everybody was shit scared. And I thought, this is a good time to buy a guitar online. Mm. <laughs> so I went and I traveled, traveled by public transport and nobody was traveling. I mean, I, I went down to the local, my local train station half past eight on a Friday morning, right? <laughs> Commuter time. The, 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 the platform was empty, right? So I travel through all these little Lancashire towns and there's nobody about, but there's flags. And we don't do flags in Britain, unless the football's being played or whatever. Like that. We don't, and it's horror and jubilee or maybe, you know? We don't do flags. We, we, we live with the legacy of empire. We're, we're not that patriotic when it comes to flags, but there was, there was flags out. There was Union Jacks and there was English flags. 
And I think the English flags were, they were there to, to support the NHS, the, the, the frontline workers. And it, you pass by a bus stop. And in the bus stop is a hand made rainbow by a child just in between two bits of polystyrene, sorry, sorry but, uh, perspex, whatever, you know, like, you know, a folder, like kids fold plastic, cellophane, right? Tapes to the bus stop, a rainbow, just a, a symbol of hope. So flags can be more than rallying cries for a battle. Well, or actually, well, yeah, they can actually be rallying cries for a different kind of battle. I just wanted to make that point. That's all right. Who else has a rebuttal? I'd Nikki, like to go. Michael, yeah. Ernie. All yeah. right, Charlie, go ahead. Go. All right. I, I, got, go ahead. I want to thank our speaker. She's around uh, covering a variety of things. I'll be eclectic as usual here. Uh, if you look around on YouTube, I, I watched this. I'm in the UN Association. And you can find a video where they present the flags of every country. And there's a certain geometry of designing them and nomenclature, uh, such things as the three, all the countries of Africa use the three basic colors with various similar designs. But if you hunt around YouTube, uh, you can, and it gets, to, there's one that gives you little, little notes on each, each country's flag and how it came about. Um, one of the interesting things in Lithuania from the, was a captive nation and the Lithuanian flag was not allowed anywhere for 50 years. But when they asserted themselves and declared independence, suddenly the nation, there were flags every, on every, every, every house. They were all hidden. They all kept them hidden in drawers. Yeah. And who knows where they are. Suddenly, in one day, the country is festooned with Lithuanian flags. Uh, the, uh, by the way, they won a thing in the Olympics. I like that one flag. They, the team won in the Olympics, but they flew the flag upside down because they didn't know the country. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the late Kay Myers is regular at the college. And I know another Conrad uh, who also comes to the college occasionally uh, maintained that flags, Kay said this all the time, flags only cause problems. And they would not stand for the national anthem at events. Conrad won't. Now the seniors, the people thought they were just kind of old, but they would not stand for the anthem. And now if you looked over social media, Man, they were just still, and they still are, about these professional athletes, and now with the Olympic participants who are uh, not standing for the anthem, what have you. Uh, the right wing, really, if you look at their websites and, and social media posts and things like that, I don't know why this is the world's biggest issue, but man, that's all they concern themselves with. Um, but anyhow, uh, they maintained that flags perhaps were problematic. Granted, they're symbols. Symbols are very powerful. Whole another topic. Uh, if you go to Philadelphia, you can visit the home of Betsy Ross, who allegedly designed the flag, of which there's no historical evidence whatsoever that she had anything to do with the American flag. Oh, there's all sorts of stories about her and George Washington conferring on star designs like that. And none of that is accurate whatsoever. Also, if you're in the area in Baltimore, be sure to go to Fort McHenry where the Star Spangled Banner was written. That's the fort that our British friends were attacking. Uh, but the flag didn't come down and so forth. Now, since we're redesigning the flag, and the anthem, I don't see why we don't adopt the red flag of socialism. And the song, I like it very much, is the International. 
which begins, arise the you, uh, victims of starvation. And the, this is internationally recognized for a hundred years as a symbol. Oh, the internationally, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the other alternative to that, which I've just posted in the chat, is the, uh, is the people's flag, which is sung to the same tune as O Tannenbaum. Oh. Uh, it's the people's flag is deepest red, it's shrouded with our heart of dead. Although their limbs are stiff and cold, their hearts are blooded and dried and cold. So raise the scarlet standard eye, though it be made of web and die. So cowards flinch and traitors sneer, we'll keep the red flag flying here. All right. Yeah, he's a, yeah, I mean, international flag of socialism, you slaves of uh, starvation. Um, anyhow, um, the, uh, the other thing is regarding uh, Great Britain, floating around this uh, guy, this guy wrote a song, I thought it was really well done. And uh, maybe I can find it, but it was called, Thank You Lucky Stars for the NHS and Socialized Medicine. Oh, very well popularized, apparently. Listen, don't don't get me started on how <laughs> fucked up your 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 health system is. I no, really, don't <laughs> get me. I've got some good friends, American friends, I know via the internet. Oh, well, I'm in the uh, senior senior activist group along with Ernie, and we're advocating for socialized medicine. And, listen, uh, listen. Do you know? On, do, 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 honestly, Charles, can I tell you the best advocate for social for universal health care is business. Forty nine of the top fifty countries have universal health care. Do you think that Japan's a socialist nation? <laughs> hey, Jay, Charlie. When uh, when Adele needed to have her. Uh, her vocal cords worked on. Where did she go for surgery? USA. Oh, if you got a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, I, you know what? Fucking right. If you're tired of like some really, really terrible disease and you want the best of the best of the best, fucking right. But you know what? If you want your arm fixed, when you break it, you know what? It doesn't cost two grand to fix a broken arm. It's only the same as fixing a, a putting a new exhaust on your Chevy truck, and you're spending two grand on getting your own fixed. Come on, Eve, Bob, even you haven't kept up on the topic. Even under socialized medicine, private practice of medicine is permitted. So if you want to go to a specialist, and like the gentleman says, if you want to pay the oh tax, no no this, 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 money, this, this, don't get me yes you're just as likely to find a really good surgeon doing private practice in, in Britain, right? It's not, private practice isn't, isn't how, how, uh, how, how does, uh, how does, how does Britain get these doctors to work for me? I mean, are they, are they forced? Well, firstly, they bloody train them, right? An awful lot of your medical expenses is going to be paid by the NHS, whether you be a nurse or a doctor. So right. are the doctors still are they still making like are they making the big money they used to make before an NHS came around? Uh, what well, depends on what you mean big money. You know, um, if you're a good surgeon, you can afford a really really big house uh, in the suburbs. You ain't going to be buying any islands. You ain't going to be buying any uh, any um, yachts with helicopters. Bob, I'm tired of. This medical community and big pharma and the insurance companies, they all got their hand on my wallet. And we're gonna fed up with it. And the doctors in particular, AMA, they all got their hand on my wallet. Well, there's only so much dough in it. First, uh, I'm to, 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 to Bob, Bob I, I, I know you got like all well as your, as your, as your picture there. Um, Kind of ironic, I don't know. But the thing is, 
the doctors there, and I know I've known a few social, couple of them socially, and I've known dentists and stuff. So basically, your medical, your, 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 your tuition fees are mostly, are pretty much paid for by the NHS because you agreed to work for the NHS for a certain amount of period of time. Uh, mostly through you be, becoming a junior, well, you're a junior doctor and you're working something like 50 hours, you know, you're on call 70 hours a week, whatever, you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. Just like the farm workers do, they train. Yeah, them. yeah, I, I, but, so, you know, so but what, what you qualify, you can, you can go, so, you can go yeah. to private practice. So, Calvin, do you see do you see doctors jumping ship after they've served their their time, basically, you know, to get their tuition paid for? Then, when their time's up, then do they jump out and go into private practice where they can really start making some money? Um, most of it, it's it, uh, it it tends to be uh, twist and swing. Um, the NHS is bread and butter, right? So, say for example, you're a dentist, yeah. Um, you can do it, and the NHS pays very, very small, not small, small beer when it comes to dental work. So, for example, you might get um, somebody comes at you, you and you know, they, they need. So you do, you, you do the basic for they, they, it's it's a very low low rent health plan. The dental service in Britain, I must admit, dental service is not great under the NHS. Right? You want if you want to, if you want to if you want great teeth, go to California, you know, or Miami, you know, uh, but. Then they say, well, okay, I can do this, I can do this, and I can do this, and that'll cost you that much and that much money. It's, so, you know, it's not like, I can do this much on the NHS, and they'll pay that much of the expenses, but it's going to cost you that much extra. So it's, it's, a, it's a partnership, if you, if you in between private practice and the NHS. Do you see a lot of medical doctors, though, leaving... The, uh, the NHS after they've served their time and then going private? Well, the, yeah. Uh, the downside is, I will say, is, is, is it, it will, the NHS becomes like a, a political football. Uh, conservatives always want to kind of like spend as little as possible. And the left want to spend more. And we've had conservatives in for a long time. And we've been defunding the NHS for a long time, when they say that's how much the Britain, British spend per year, and we get the, like the lowest for, that's because we've been defunding the thing, you know. And I've so I've known I know quite a few nurses, and really they've been they they've been shot on, you know, all for your, a long 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 time. New, all of your new Brits there that are pouring in from uh, Syria and Africa and everything, are they getting? Are they getting uh, free NHS uh, healthcare too? Um. That's, which depends by all. Um, it's it's not exactly they're not exactly pouring in. Um, the if they're illegals, they're crossing the channel, which is not an easy job. Um, if the the fact is, most of the NHS is staffed by uh, people from other countries. Uh, we we that that's one of the. One of the, we, we've been we've been taking the best of Africa, India, Pakistan, uh, Sierra Leone, whatever. We've been because we, we we because we, we this is, yeah here's a steady. If you're a, if you're a really good uh, medical person, um, we, this is a steady job for you. And I got, been, more, I, think, like, I got a feeling more of the best of them are coming to the United States. <laughs> oh, if they're really, re oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we don't get the Premier League, but we get we get all the all the, re the really good guys, all right, the good guys, the, the good nurses. You know, the, if you, so for example, if a, if a guy's a really good, I don't know, pediatrician from Iran, who's a, um, a political refugee and a Muslim. How willing are you uh, to, 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 to like accommodate him? Bob, the United Farm Workers right now have been financing <coughs> the legal education of any offspring of any member. And the payback is you have to work a couple of years, I think four years for the union. Now, I don't know if there's any attrition rate 
but it's been in, in progress for years. So they're, they're in essence financing their own staff or in-house labor lawyers. Seems to work okay. I just wanted to say one last thing in my rebuttal period uh, to our Kevin. Um, I'm a historian and I even have spoken to the college on the history of the steam engine about a year or so ago and oh, the yeah. anniversary of the transcon. But I'm well versed uh, on the Liverpool and Manchester Railroad. I travel it regularly to see my daughter. Yeah. I go through Rain Hill, uh, where the Rain Hill trials were, exactly. where Lord, H Lord Hodgkinson was the first man to be run over by a motorized transport. <laughs> Yeah, it was there were accidents. Uh, the first, the first, the first road, basically, not well, the first motorized transport accident fatality. Actually, Ooh. there was an accident earlier. There was not any fatalities, Ooh. but they designed the steam engine before that, and they ran it for a couple miles, and then they stopped and went into a pub for a beer, and left it running. And at the time, they didn't have safety valves and things, and it exploded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charlie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, that there's a cracker story. I, I read so much about American railroads that the last couple of years I've been reading up on British Rail just because it's new. And Charles, do you know what the saddest thing about the American political system is? far as rail, is that you've got no high-speed rail. Yeah. Because, because oil, big oil and big airlines have, have blocked it. You get 80%, any, any city that wants to build an L, improve their airport, gets 80% federal funding. 80% funding for, for any major roads, new roads. What, where's the funding for rail? Rail, rail, the rail and the telegraph is what, what really made America a union. Yeah. Now one last story. If you go to the museum in Chicago, you can see the steam engine on display, the 999, which they ran. And I've been to this part in New York where they ran it. And it ran over 100 miles per hour, the first vehicle. To ever exceed 100 miles per hour. Oh yeah. And the British, however, said no, no. They never acknowledged this. <laughs> well, and they said, oh, there's all kinds of things wrong with it. They didn't have well, the right to stop. Uh, the steam engine is probably pro steam yeah. engines are probably the most efficient engines in the world. Uh, you can technically engine. argue that a rocket is a steam engine. The flags. If, a, a, a rocket that sends, a, sends, sends astronauts to the moon is technically a steam engine because it makes steam. <laughs> Anyhow, that's it. Thank you, folks. But I, I was watching. I was watching a documentary on the um, Indian Railroad, and it was a mountain railroad, and it went up in, uh, like up in like to the to like the high yeah northern India. And uh, they had to eventually replace their coal-fired coal steam engine. And so they replaced it with an oil-fired steam engine because a steam engine has got more power-to-weight ratio, better power-to-weight rate to ratio than a diesel. I never knew that. They've actually, it's actually got a better power-to-weight ratio. Yeah, yeah, there are differences. Uh, I the major the thing is better. the coal fired are very inefficient, though. That's the problem. They could very yeah. So they replaced it with they replaced it with an oil with a, with, with a, uh, oil fire, but it was still a steam engine. Yeah. The major problem was you had to stop every four fifty or hundred miles for water. They really drank. Yeah. They were thirsty. A lot of people don't realize that. Uh, so, Charlie, in your uh, socialist utopia with high-speed rail, how fast are these trains going to go, really? 
Well, it depends if you put if you put in checkout TV, for example, if you go from New York to Washington, right? So how long does it take you to check in? How long does it get your your, your, your baggage process and such shit like that? Blah 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 blah. By the time you get out, then you get to Washington. And let's bear let's bear in mind, airports tend to be outside the city, yeah. So if you're talking about how speed rail, we you'd be talking maybe 200 miles an hour. But they go from the city center. All right, they don't go 200 miles through the city center, an hour through the city center. They you wait till they get to the birds before they speed up. But it's maybe uh, one and a half, twice the time. But they go from the city center. Bob. The industry in the States uh, informally has adopted standards for the nomenclature. They begin at 90, they change, there's 110, <coughs> they call it higher speed. Uh, 85 is another threshold, but generally 220 uh, is can regarded as uh, high speed rail right now. Yeah. Well, I, can, I can see that for these, you know, short, short lines you know when you're going from uh you know cities that are fairly close to each other but even if well, uh, new york and washington, you know, chicago, go from new york, LA, washington chicago. what's that new york washington chicago philadelphia uh new york to chicago that might be a little bit of a stretch but i mean but you're not you gonna, you're not well, gonna how, long, how long how long does it take you to fly from new york to, to philadelphia and you're flying at what, 320 miles an hour? But that's after you've gone through through baggage checkout and all it, because it's an international airport, so there's all kinds of security, blah, 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 blah. And it's, you know, I guarantee whatever the O'Hare Airport or JFK is, it's, it's somewhere out of town, right? It's not, it's not no New, New York Central. It's not. It's not Chicago Central. It's not in the middle of the city where you work, and, and, and all the all the transport links are, are there. You've got to get a cab or a or a cheap, or a underground. If you're lucky, there's an underground service that goes there. A, a, you know, subway. Bob, in transportation, they don't think of it like barbells. Uh, it's in. It's called city pairs. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Bob, 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 here's the point, right? Here's and the point. How many cities are there along the route and possible trips of, on that route? But here's the point. Here's the point, right, about the high speed rail. Okay, maybe it takes one and a half to two times as long. But it's not like airline travel, but you got to, you got to, you, you got you got all the airport shit, so you can't really settle. And then you get on the plane and you're choked in like, you know, and you got you're like like that, you know, because you're crying economy, right? You sit there, you can do work. You, it, it's a luxury. You can get a, you know. You well, I, have, I have to admit it. So yeah, Amtrak. Yeah, all right, okay, all right. And, and there's a point in point. You can run one of those buggers off wind or solar. Or water falling, right? The airplanes, the cars, they all need fossil fuel, unless we all go like electric with Tesla shit like that. But it's going to take forever. Yeah. Well, we know that the wind and solar aren't going to cut the mustard for replacing oil. You know, could there have to be a good nuclear component in there at some point? Yeah, yeah it's a question of degrees, uh, Tim. Well, I. Wish you'd take a look at something called a thorium molten salt reactor. I won't say much more than that. Um, long, long time ago, a, a friend of mine, uh, I, was, I was doing city planning and shit like that. And they come, come across this book about re before anybody had known about recycling, right? We didn't, we, nobody talked about recycling. Right. Uh, the basic idea was that, well, we, cities take more resources from another, from, from somewhere else, they process them. And then they send them out. And the idea was, well, there's an awful lot of raw resources that the city throws away that we could actually reuse. 
And the idea was that maybe if we got like at least 70% of our raw resources from what we throw away, that would be a good idea. And now we've refined the idea the places in Scandinavia get like 100% of their raw materials from what we throw away. Uh, it's no, it's like, a question of degrees, and I agree with you, not a hundred hundred percent. Okay, renewables are never going to replace. Uh, well, I'm not going to say never, but it's always a question of degrees. Um, yet, sure, you're never going to stop all your frivolous expenses in your household budget, right. but if you if you can't increase your income. It might be a nice idea to like maybe not go out as often or maybe not spend so much on Amazon, you know? Uh -huh. You always got to need some, just some kind of like out, like frivolous expenses, but it's a question of degrees. Well, I'm not. It would take five or 10 years to build a nuclear reactor, and you're not certain if it would work or explode. Charlie, that is completely and outright outrageous. We've gone through this so many times. Why? We've gone through this so many times that <coughs> systematically that the thorium molten salt reactor works and it's a proven technology. Where uh, is it proven? Where? Where can I visit that location? Yes, called Oak Ridge. Oh, we're talking about fusion. There's no it's thorium. Sorry, guys. Are we talking about nuclear it's fusion? In no, we're talking about nuclear fission. I want to see how much electricity you <laughs> generate. You can go all Charlie, over the world. Charlie, and find you know the thing is, is, is if you, go, you haven't even looked at the thorium energy. You thorium won't even take a look at the technology. You're so set in your ways, it's crazy. You, you believe that wind and solar are going to do it. They have their part, they have their place, but there's no way you're not going to have large scale power. And if you want recycling, you're going to need power. If you want other things, you're going to need power. And the only reason we're not doing it right now is because of the excessive regulations on nuclear plants in the United States. We don't recycle our fuel, which means we could do it like France does. <coughs> and I know Germany's now have stopped their reactors and their energy prices are through the roof. A lot of people don't like what they did. Tim, can I just... Uh Put a, 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 another idea. Another idea. We're talking about energy. Um, yes. Uh, when I look out my window, I can see Snowdonia, which is right. the, the Welsh mountain range. And next to the highest mountain in Wales, Snowdon, is right. the second island. Like, uh, there's a, a small mountain. And what they do there is they pump water up to the top of it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Uh, and it sits in a big reservoir at the top, right? Mm -hmm. And when the adverts are coming on, on uh, about to come on on, on, on the nation's favourite soap, mm -hmm. right? They, 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 they let the waters come out or 10 seconds before the advert's about to come on. They, 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 they let the water out so that when everybody gets out to put the kettle on to make a cup of tea, mm -hmm. there's enough power. It's like a battery. I know it's called demand. It's called um, demand demand holding. It's like a battery or something. I fully yeah. about it. And it's so just, it's if you thing. had enough renewables, and let's face it, you guys have got like the Mojave Deserts and a lot. I mean, like they're like they're, you know Death Valley. I mean, like, like just imagine like that, that full of like solar panels. Look at it. Right. That is anywhere. that is no that is like a renewable mm -hmm. Texas oil field. Yep. Tim, decades, decades ago, we used to have an engineer speak at the college. And he gave not only one but two talks. He had maps, details. This is like 1980, uh earlier. And he was going to run all the railroads of the United States using solar power. <laughs> if he could do it then, it'd be smart. The technology is infinitely better than today. Uh, and the only place the thorium reactor works that I know of 
is in a cartoon. Oh, right away, Charlie. And, yeah. and what's wrong with running the, your cars off, uh, off hydrogen? There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, hydrogen would be a much better fuel than uh, even natural gas or something because you have to generate it. It produces water. I mean, you can get hydrogen off the solar power. The problem are cars themselves and roads and congestion. You need public transit. Well, Charlie, to be honest with you, there's no way I'm going to haul when we go when we open back up again. There's no way I'm going to start hauling camera equipment and all that in a vehicle especially where there's lack of public transit out in the suburbs. Now, I know that there's arguments if I had better access to public transit, I might use it more. But you know something? Yeah, I, I, I go from, I go from Algonquin to Franklin Park every day. I transported for years, <coughs> I transported for years the screen and the projector and made the, went to the college. How do you think it got there? <laughs> you only had to do it once. I, I did it every week, a hundred times. No, well, we know that, but uh, it's a, certainly a lot more convenient to drive it oh, in. Like Superman. <laughs> well, anyway, I Charlie, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, no, I'm not. I'm not going to go there. I, I. I don't want to embarrass you further. Anyway, um. The thing is, is that, you know, I, I know when I've been looking at this energy stuff for quite a while, it took me a lot of time and a lot of thinking to get into this thing. If you just, Kevin, I, I would I just encourage you, and I'm not going to say. Sorry, can I just reiterate? My name is Kelvin. I was named. Kelvin, I'm scientist. sorry, Kelvin. I apologize. I see it. Yeah. Now. You know, you know, you've got a lot. You've got, I'm sure you know loads of people named after saints. I'm the only person you know named after a scientist. Ah. Lord Kelvin. Okay, okay, yeah, you're right. I'll remember that. I hope you join us again at the college. Right. Oh yeah, I will do, yeah. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna stop the recording and wish everybody good night, and we're gonna keep the Zoom call open so that we can continue this further discussion. That sounds, that sounds, I'll do that. At this, at this point, we're gonna stop the recording.